Hello, and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 471 at scavengerlife.com. So last week we talked about uh, what, how we would start our store now with everything we know now. Just sell gold bars <laughs> from the get-go. <laughs> that was definitely one of the, like, that was such a common question when we first started doing this podcast. What? Should I sell? I don't yeah. see that as much. What I, should I sell? I, yeah. I think just because everyone now knows, just go online and look. But, you know, yeah, the answer is like, just sell gold bars if you have like, <laughs> a choice. But uh, yeah. And it was good. On the f- forum, there were a lot of people giving their ideas about, yeah. you know, how they would uh, do it differently now. And a lot of people really seem to embrace the idea of sell stuff you're interested in. Yes. Like, if you're just going out getting stuff you don't really like you don't want that stuff in your life and it's hard to keep going it just feels like junk yeah even though it's not junk to some people some people might think most of my storage they look at is junk but not to me right right but but to us you know i think that's why we really see you know some people have the mindset of like tell me what to buy you know, what sells? Like what, mm, right. what hats? Right. Okay, hats is it. I'm only going to buy hats. I'm just yeah. going to sell hats. I understand hats. That's all I ever want to sell. Yeah. To us, that's boring, but that's just to us. What we need, what we like doing is challenging ourselves. Like, yeah. there's this thing I've never seen before. Let's try and sell that. Right. You know, here's a weird shaped item. Can we sell it and ship it? I, yeah. Exactly. It's like we like the puzzle and the like adventure. Because I think the the level of satisfaction when someone someone somewhere saw it and bought it. You know, it doesn't have a brand name. Well, some things have brand, lots of things have brand names, but it doesn't have a you know recognizable whatever. You know, it's not a pair of Nikes. It's you know, and someone saw it and clicked yes buy. Yeah. That's an amazing feeling. It's 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 a strange thing, and it's satisfying. And Kentucky Picker was saying, like, he's only been selling for a couple of years now. His advice was to start really simple mm. for the first year, yeah. even. You know, focus on selling, like, small items that you can ship in first class. Like poly mailers. And that's up to one pound. That's very help. Yes. You know, he says, you know, because it's true. And we kind of talked about this. You like in the beginning stages, you're getting the hang of eBay. Like eBay's a weird beast. Yes. People complain about it being complicated. I get it. It is, yeah, it is it, what it is, but beast. you just have to deal with that. You know, especially it's not just, it's not just shipping the item. Yep. If you get a return, you, you have to understand that, that, that yeah. process too. And if you ramp up too fast, he says, the stress mm. will 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 go off the charts. Because <laughs> and it's true. I mean, That's I can funny. remember this when we would have like little problems in the beginning. They became huge problems. I mean, I just remember having like emotional hangovers from like a day of dealing with like a grumpy buyer that I these mean, days yeah. I don't care about. Yeah, you know? it, it didn't become, we create, we, we, we helped it become a huge problem right. where you're stressing out over it. And now you would just be like, yes, no, ignore, you know, like, or, right. or, you know, return it and I'll refund you. Yeah. That's the answer right. 10 years in, right. you know? And then also some of the advice was like, You know, I think that when you watch like a guru, a lot of times they're like, you know, sell everywhere, like spread out your whatever your store. And I think, again, keeping it simple is really good. Like if you're going to sell on Amazon, sell on Amazon. Yeah. I think it's there's a danger of selling on eBay, on Amazon, on Poshmark, on Macari, on Facebook. What's the danger? Craigslist. I mean, I mean, the danger is just like you're like stretch too your brain thin. can't handle it you're having to man you know if you're new to all this stuff so if you sell something on amazon okay take it off of ebay and take it off here yep. and take it off there and then don't accidentally sell it somewhere else and also you're having to spend your time you know there are some tools that help you cross post but not really so you're basically having to, to spend time putting the same item here and here and mm-hmm. here and here and here So when you could put five different items on one place. So 
pick a place. It doesn't have to be eBay. Some people really love Poshmark. Mm -hmm. So especially if you're selling clothes and just just do Poshmark yeah. and see how that is. But get really good at one thing and then open yourself yeah. up to other places. And, you know, for us, we just, you know, since the beginning, you know, I did try other places, actually. I tried Etsy because Etsy existed in 2008. Um, I tried a couple other places and just the volume was at ebay so i just yeah. stuck there i was like i'm just sticking with ebay <laughs> you know a lot of people think oh you know when you tell people or especially young people oh i sell on ebay they're just like what yeah for a living like there are that many people there are you know yeah. it's crazy yeah, people I mean, still people still shop there <laughs> <laughs> i'm telling you they do yeah i mean look and I just want to be clear, too. There are people who post on our forum and they put their numbers up and they have like a fourth of the inventory we have. Yeah. And we'll make as much or more than we yeah. do. There are probably people hearing us that don't post anywhere and we don't know anything about them, but they probably do much better than we do per month. Right. And so it's not about what's the best. It's just what's the best for you. Our way is like... The lazy way, almost. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's the right word. Oh, are you calling us lazy? <laughs> oh, my God. But, you know, like, look, anyone hearing this can make more than we can in a week or month. And that's by going out and spending lots and lots of time yeah. finding stuff to sell. Like, yeah. your scavenging is a full-time yeah, job. Yeah, you're definitely scavenging. You're willing to pay up for popular items. You list all the time. Yeah. You know. Yes. You slash you every day. prices to move inventory. <laughs> so if something doesn't sell in a week, you're you're willing to like slash those prices and move that stuff. And so there are people we've talked yeah. to who sell half of their inventory every month. Yeah. It's which crazy. is incredible. Like right. ours is like 2%. I know it's like 0.5% yeah. or yeah, something, yeah. you know. Uh, and that's incredible. But my question is, is can you keep up that? work right week is it after sustainable? week month after month you know and that's i guess why we've developed the way we sell is because it's how we can make pretty consistent cash week after week for years yeah and it doesn't kill us you know it stays interesting right like when i'm listing stuff i'm not like Oh, it's a such and such widget again. Although there's a variation, so I have to write a different yeah. title. Like, no, it's so varied. I think also just again, it's always about learning. If you never run a business be before, understanding uh, uh, it's gross profit first year a net profit. Like those are two different things. And when you see someone on a YouTube talk about how much they they sell. Figure out, are they talking about their gross right. or their net? Because if someone says, I, you know, I grossed a million dollars. And you're like, but this how month, much did that million dollars cost you? What, yeah, like what were the costs to get right. to that million dollars? Because if you're selling an item for a hundred dollars, but it costs you ninety dollars to buy it, your profit isn't a hundred dollars, your profit's ten dollars. And that's not even before all the other fees. Yep. So that's the other thing too. Uh it doesn't matter your volume. It just it's like your net profit at the right. end of the day, and I think that's where we've excelled for us is we really have low costs. Yes, and that's what excites me. It's low risk, low costs, and yeah. we make the money we need. And I sleep at night better. Yeah, I've always liked the way we've done that. Yeah. It's made me feel better. <laughs> you know, you're not sitting on, you know. Yeah. X amount of dollars of inventory that's not moving. Yeah. You're like, I didn't spend that much, but it's still moving. Yeah. I'm, I think in the relationship, I'm the one. I mean, I'm pretty cheap, but I'm not quite. Oh, cheap I'm either. the cheapest. I, I'm the one that buys at auctions because I'm willing to risk a little bit more than yeah, you Yeah, no, are. no, no. I am the cheapest <laughs> person in the world. Yes. But it's good. And people also, there were quite a few shout outs about boxes about like hoarding oh, boxes i love it i love it because look you will sell some if you're willing to sell like me some crazy size 32 inches by 10 you know some horrible size thing that no one at the auction wanted for every single reason you can imagine 
And, you know, Jay, Jay's so funny. He'll come home with some boxes <laughs> or something and he's like, now, do you want to keep these? And I'm like, of course I do. Are you right. crazy? Because look, at nine o'clock in the morning when I'm shipping before my postal carrier comes at like noon, I'm like, what am I, you know, I got to go out to our warehouse and be like, there it is. I might have to modify it a little bit. I might have to do an extra little bit of stuffing or cut down or whatever. That saves me so much time. And we don't, for the most part, break down boxes, especially if they're weird shape. Because yeah, I try not to. We need to be able to, to see, see them. them. Now, if we're buying a bunch of stuff on Amazon, those Amazon boxes are pretty standard size. Just break those down. It will break those yeah. down. But the weird size. It really helps me not to break boxes down because... I need to go out there with a measuring tape usually, and I'm like, boom, boom, boom. Yep, right. that's the one. Yeah. Um, yeah, we... It's we, so helpful. It, it's strange. We seem to have like a perfect... I don't know how it happens, but we get almost every box we, we can find, but we ship enough. Yeah, and we that always they go seem down. to have enough space for the most part. You know? Yeah, because, I mean, we sell enough weird stuff. Yeah. You know, I, I, a couple of times... I'll have to look at what we sold last week. There were a couple of times last week where I was like, <laughs> I'm pulling one of these because I got right. something that's weird. <laughs> yeah, and it is interesting, too, that... Um, People were saying the thing that we do is you'll drive down the street and you'll see a box on the side of the road and you'll stop and you'll get the box. Of course you and you'll will. Be really excited because you it. know that there's something in your inventory. You're like, oh, that one piece of artwork. If I sell that, yeah. I need that box. You know. But kind of going back to what we we're talking about, the way we sell. I guess the way we talk about it is like just everything we do. It's about like building equity. Like that's. This is like business class one hundred and one with I like know. scavengers who don't know what they're talking. We're like about. It's, it's building equity. We're, we're punks, yeah, who are trying to learn enough business to survive without being gross. I think that's. Without, I think and, that's and like by a, gross we don't mean gross <laughs> income. We're talking about just disgusting, slimy. So yeah, I mean it's like this idea of. Every time we put an item up on eBay, it's like it's like this thing that yeah. we can make money on. Right. And it's like a savings account. And right. the more we put up, the bigger the savings account gets. And we've learned that basically everything sells if you hold on to it long <laughs> enough, you know? And our costs are cheap enough. Yeah. To where we can keep it up really for matter. five years yeah. for the most part. I mean and you want still to, make money. Look, like you if Right. The last few weeks, there have been certain things we've been getting at auctions, and Jay will always say that. Oh, we got that at the most recent auction, Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> um, Why do I say that? Because I'm just like, I don't want to go to the auction. Um, <laughs> of course, no one's going anywhere. It's just right. all online, but yeah. we still have to pick it up. But, you know, there have been certain sort of high-dollar items that sell quickly in a couple days, and you're like, oh, yep, yep. That's, you got a source. Yeah, I mean, look. In a perfect world, everything it we put up right would sell the exact same day for the exact price we want. But that's <laughs> just not a reality. So, but but the idea is is we're building and like the you know we take money we make and we buy real estate. Yep. And that's equity too. Yeah. We try and make them into a rental, so it's generating money for us, but also yeah. it's worth something. Yeah. So if we ever have to, we can sell it and yeah. be okay. Yeah. We also try and manage our debt by having no consumer debt, like day to day debt. And then we do right. take on some debt for buying property and stuff, but yeah. we, we manage That's it the most best. of our debt. Right. Most of our debt is business debt for our properties. Right. There yeah. is no, like when you say consumer debt, it means like, right, like car, like, TV, like we're not paying Going on off. vacation, yeah. boat, uh, you know, and look, no judgment. We just don't like that kind of debt. Like we if just, we can't yeah. afford it, we, we, don't we don't buy it. it. Now- Buying property, I mean, it's tough. I know that there's a whole Dave Ramsey people who are like zero debt at all. Yeah, zero. Look, I want zero debt. But then me. I feel like we, yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's, that's a whole other conversation. It's like a whole schism, yeah. Yeah. whatever. So, uh, but you know, a little bit every day we're building. You know, yeah. Just every, you know, like I'm going out and working on a property and fixing it up, and you're here putting stuff on eBay, yeah. and just like it's just building and. 
we aren't just consuming right and that makes us feel good yeah you know and we're not trying to make all the money in one day you yeah. know yeah which sometimes and i know look being independent people it feels like you need to do that yeah. <laughs> you're like i gotta like you should see my office right now <laughs> yeah it's pretty uh it's just like i tell listened- me about it's your office. What so, would I see if I walked in there? You would, first of all, <laughs> see foam packing material, which which a friend of ours from Broad Porch, Jill, they got a new um, sink. And the sink, you know, if you've ever bought a commercial sink online, it's like covered in like crazy foam packing. And she was like, oh, do you want this? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. So I filled the car with it, right? right. Left it in the car for three days because I was like, where the hell am I going to put these? And so Jay, finally, we needed the car to like fill it up with linens for the rental to go clean the rental. And Jay comes in with his hands full and he just dumps them on the floor. So you walk into my office and there's just these like pile of big like foam panel things just like everywhere like it looks like a moonscape you're just like okay all right and then behind that there's like 20 boxes from an auction that haven't been opened yet this is because my helper is just like gone for the moment forever uh until i get another one and then there's like weird like clothes and vases and like a couple broken things that i need to see if i'm fixing them or not like That need to be photographed. I have 10, like, I have a list right here. It's literally right in front of me of stuff I'm about to take pictures of, like, tomorrow or whenever. Uh, But they need to get inventory, inventory numbers before I take photos. So, yeah, you, you look at it and you're like, this is never going to stop. You know, I'm never going to get any of this done. But I took pictures of 10 things and listed 10 things last week and some of them sold. So you're like, yes. Yep. Put a pin in that idea. Bump pin. Uh, so yeah, I mean that's you just heard yeah. the life of someone that's been selling on eBay for years now. Yeah, actual years, right? Twelve, uh, twelve years. You know, so it's not like yeah, it's 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 a struggle, right? And it's always a struggle with maintenance and organization, and keeping planning, tidy, and that you know, it's 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 always a struggle, and that's yeah. why you have to have good way to you know it's easy to buy stuff yeah it's harder to deal with it after you buy it you know and that's really what separates the people who you know sell continually and the people are like oh i made a bunch of money in one month i don't want to do that anymore yeah it is that's not the life i want yeah um but yeah that's kind of for us it's slow and steady yeah wins the race right you know Uh, okay um ebay Someone was talking about shipping coffee cups or mugs. Yeah. Coffee mugs. And that, is this how, did you do it? They say they put it in some certain size, like, square box, and then they put that in a padded flat rate envelope, and then they ship it. No, that is not how I do it at okay. all. It's, that's kind of brilliant, um, but no. I, most of my mugs um, end up being two pounds. That's just what they are. I don't like to do flat rate because I double box them. Mm. Um, So I will wrap them up in a bubble wrap, put them in some kind of cardboard shell or a box, depending on the size, like the little, almost like those four by four boxes is a good size. And then I put it in another big box. Mm. Like USPS has a, it's like seven by seven by eight box. And that's kind of perfect. And I pad that out. I just... I don't want them to break. That weird origami box. Yeah, that that's you, a four by four. You by hated four. and now love. Yeah, would I that fit in a flat it. rate envelope? But see, that's Tell me. maybe. But I don't want to ship it like that because mm. then it's not double box. It's right. just padded, boxed, and like Got it. the bubble mailer is not going to protect it enough. Right. There might be people out there that have a fine time doing that, but I honestly feel like two pounds versus a flat rate envelope, flat mm. rate padded envelope, mm-hmm. flat rate padded envelopes aren't cheap anymore. Mm. Like they're not, they're like eight fifty or something. Wow. It's like for two pounds somewhere close to us, it's right. getting to be a similar price. So it's not like it's $6 like it used to be mm. where you're like, it's gotta be flat rate. Like flat rate is so high now that I'm like, it's two pounds. Like, yeah. if you want a mug that's special, that's protected, you're paying for it. So yeah. that that's my... Because I just... 
it doesn't help me to have things break on right. the way to someone for right. a, like a twenty dollar mug. That that I mean that still stings us when something gets Ugh. to somebody and it go, gets there broken because you know it was old and already had a crack that we didn't see right. or the post office was really rough. Although you can't ever really play in the post office i mean it's really about like yeah but then you know you can't ship everything like fort knox because then you'd be packing forever right. and it would cost you so much so it's just yeah i just i at this point in time with the inventory we have we have so much delicate things that i'm selling just random whatever sets of glass you know stuff i never thought i would sell um, that I just have it down where I'm like, this is how I do it. And it, I haven't had anything break, knock on wood, um, in a really long time because I'm just like, I don't, it's like muscle memory. I don't even think about it anymore and I'm, and I'm done with it. You know. Now back in the old days yeah. for us, we would buy insurance on everything. Not, that's not true. No, it's not true. Not on everything, but like. Do we buy insurance as much as we no, used we don't, to? No, we don't. Because there was a moment where we learned a lot. We yeah. learned something from someone that commented that, that said, think about it. Yeah. How often are you actually... Right. Look, I don't... <laughs> he, he, here's here's you, you cut me off there real quick, just so you know. Okay. Well, what you were going to say is how often do you right. um, need to claim insurance on a $30 item, right? So, number one, I send a lot of things priority mail. That had because we're like top rated, whatever, whatever. You get a hundred dollars worth of insurance free. That's amazing. So if there's something that I'm like, okay, I'm not going to send this parcel. I'm sending a priority because it's a similar price, and then I'm covered. So you don't pay anything really. Um, and if it's above a certain amount, and I'm nervous about it because it's delicate, even though I packed it really well, I I put insurance on it. Yep. Um, just not, it's just not very often anymore. Yeah. Um, hmm. it's just weighing risk. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, I, I agree. It's just, it's all about weighing risk. But yeah, in the old days, $30 bowl, I'd be like insurance. Right. If it wasn't priority or whatever, right. but yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it, it just shows that we, we've evolved and we've learned things from what people, you know, if people come to us and they have a good argument for how they do things, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. You know? I mean, I've had stuff in the last couple of months break or chip or whatever that were not made of glass. Mm -hmm. They were made of like metal. Hmm. And I've, I've done insurance claims on those because I sent it priority mail right. um, just because it was close by. And I'm like, yeah, it's big, it's heavy. And we'll just send a priority mail. Yeah. So glad I did because yeah. I claimed insurance on it and I refunded my buyer. So yeah, yeah. yeah it just and, depends on the item. And that's always the key. The buyer shouldn't have to call the post office. Yes. Just give them their uh, money and then uh, you deal with it. Because that's yes. how I would yes. want to be treated as a buyer. I didn't ship it. It's not my responsibility. Right. Like, just make me whole, and then uh, you, and you deal with it. Now, we did talk about that with our friend last week, right? right? Like, this friend of ours <laughs> swears he will never, ever in his life sell on eBay again, which is crazy, because um, he would be really, really good at it. Right. Uh, because. But, yeah, because of that reason. He was like, oh, it broke? Well, call the post office uh, buyer. Right. And it's like, no, 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 no. Refund your yeah. buyer, and he then you deal. War. Yeah, like he went to war with eBay and PayPal, and you're gonna lose. And he yeah, did lose, lose, and now he just like yeah. yeah. So that's good advice. <laughs> that's very good advice. You, he's a sane person, and for the most part, in every other part of his life, it's just weird how people they get involved <laughs> in eBay and they become sometimes crazy people. You know, I do want to mention one more one more thing that happened with a insurance claim um, or a potential insurance claim. I had a little. It's funny. It was a clock. Also, um, it was a clock that had some. It was just like a plastic plug in, like nineteen sixties, like GE alarm clock. But the face, like the acrylic face, somehow got cracked mm. on the way to the the buyer. I didn't. It wasn't cracked when I packed it. Um, I packed it really well too. I don't know what happened. Like you said, it might have already had something and yeah. it like got. Um, but so I was like, okay, uh, I actually did send it priority. So I was like, okay, I'll do an insurance claim. What you know? How do you want to handle this? And the guy was awesome. He was like, you know what? I actually want to keep this uh -huh. and I want to, I love vintage 
old stuff and your store has so much cool like I did not ex- this has never happened before he was like I want to buy another item in your store if you would just give me like a 10% discount oh my god and of course I mean I'll give people like <laughs> yeah. I send offers all day long with right. discounts so um, and, and we take offers on almost everything so I was like sure <laughs> send me a message through that right. item I'll do the you know Right. The reply with offer, and then I'll just, yeah, just keep the clock. I mean, he he paid for the clock and kept yeah. it. So, you know, when you're communicating with a buyer and being like, what can I do? I mean, I'm the last person that wants to do that. Like, trust me. I'm like, oh, God. You know, Jay has to be like, be nice to people. Um, but I actually was, like, felt bad. Yeah. Um, and it turned out really well. I'm like, I just sold two things and one of them got damaged. Like, that was an amazing experience. So you never know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we got to think of buyers like that. Uh, Virtual of buyers. Yeah. Like just insane. Yeah. Uh, okay. I looked in, on your seller, on a, our seller dashboard. If you go to seller, there's a link somewhere on your... <laughs> the seller dashboard my, uh, uh, is like... But, <laughs> It shows you someone was talking about a, uh, where you know it shows you how much is your your totals to date on eBay, and I don't know if this is true. Totals to date of what you sold? Well, yeah. So our transactions supposedly are twenty thousand nine hundred and twenty nine items. So Tr- since transactions, yeah. I know your store right. because we're using your uh, a user, and it's been open since whatever ninety nine. But it, you didn't really have a whole lot of. No, I didn't that, sell a lot, like, and I didn't buy a lot back then. Something. Yeah, like so. Basically, since we started in what was it like the two thousand eight? Was it was kind of like the end of two thousand eight, right? Because we it moved was like it was like the summertime, middle. yeah, middle because of the summer. We moved here in May of two thousand eight, and I don't yeah. know how soon we I started. Think we were summer. shopping in like July and August. I don't say halfway through. Yeah. So it's basically been about, and we're like halfway through two thousand twenty. So it's like eleven years, mm-hmm. and we sold. Almost twenty one thousand items, and this is individual, one by one. one I packed by one all. Items. I packed all of right. them. This is not wholesale. <laughs> so I did the math, and it comes to about a hundred and fifty items a month. Yeah, that sounds right for month us. After month, one hundred and fifty year yeah. after year. I mean, it's like on average five items a day. And yeah, to it's me, about five items a day. Some people That's are funny. like, ah, oh, you know, I. I sold twenty thousand just yesterday. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. you know, cool. Yesterday afternoon. Good for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a player. I get it. So but for us being scavengers, to me that's incredible that we've been it's able consistent. to sell that much day after day, month to month. We we had, we haven't gone crazy. We don't hate it. You know, we yeah. found ways to stay interested. Yep. That's amazing. Yeah, to it's me. incredible. Yeah. Um you know. That fluctuates. There are days where we sell 10 things. Right. And then the next day you sell two. Sure. You know, it goes, yeah. but then like you're saying, it's an average. And, you know, and if you do the math on that, I mean, we average 30 to $50 in an item. I mean, that's pretty decent cash, you know. And, and again, that's before, yeah. that's the gross. So you got to think of all the expenses, but it's still not it's bad. It's a gross, gross. Yeah. Yeah. We're not gross, but that is our gross <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay, let's go back to the pin. Put the pin in it. We have learned that having a helper is very important to us. Yeah. For so long, we did everything ourselves. Yep. Like I was taking photos and you were actually putting them online. I yep. mean, it was tough. We were always dealing with death piles. Yep. You know, where we had things and this was even... Before it's storage or stuff like yeah, everywhere. that, walking over, just sucking my soul. Yeah, um, you know, and we're starting to build up those piles again yeah. because we don't have someone helping just us cranking process through. Stuff. Yeah, and I think that that's very important for us. Yeah, we've learned that now that our helper's only been gone for like a month. Yeah, I took my truck in to get it inspected. Yeah, for the great state of Virginia, uh, <laughs> I passed. Um, <laughs> Good job. The guy who owns the place has a son who is uh, working there. He's yeah. in his early twenties. Yeah, and he for some reason knows we sell on eBay. I don't. And he was asking me about it, and I was like, yeah, "It's fine." Anyway, I was about to turn around. You're like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I was like, "By the way, do you know anyone who's looking for like a job to help us do eBay?" Yeah, you know. 
because uh, and I we didn't hear anything from him, and we got a call a couple of days ago yeah. from a young man. Yeah. Probably in his late teens, early, early 20s. 20s. He's, he's going to the local community college and he's like, I heard you have a job. Yeah. Sir. Sir. <laughs> so funny. Oh, it's so cute. And yeah. so Sir. we're actually going to meet him in a couple of days. Who knows how we'll turn out? Yeah, I don't know, but but it is. Look, I don't think he's done eBay. You, mm-hmm. You've talked to him. Yeah, we I know his parents. We actually uh, know. Yeah, he, I mean, he, he literally used to live. In the house across the street from us, so it's so it's so funny that he's coming here. We're he like, probably, this is your old neighborhood. He was probably ten back then. I know. So, and now that uh, was, you know, he's like nineteen. So it's going to be interesting. I mean, we are not experts at this, but yeah, we'll meet with him. We'll show him what we're doing. He has never done anything like this before. Yeah. So our last helper had done Etsy some photography and Etsy. Yeah. And I do wonder. Yeah. And I asked you about this. Yeah. Is it going to be different having a young guy right, versus, versus a young lady? Because I had this stereotype about a young lady who's like, I get Etsy. Vintage clothes. I get vintage. Shoes. I buy more stuff online. Right, right. I know what things are. And I just think of myself. Yeah. In my late teens, I'm like, what is this stuff? Uh, what is this piece of junk? You know? So I don't know. I was thinking maybe we just hire him and he's just cranking out photos. photos. You know. And because- I'm doing ter- Look, yes. Okay, listen. <laughs> Number one. This is this is my opinion. Number one, it depends on the personality, guy right. or girl. Right. Doesn't matter. Right. Like it, it, if he's like what you just described uh, yourself as, what is this? who cares? <laughs> uh. Why would we hire right. someone like that I know. anyway? I know. Um, number two, <laughs> both my helpers who were young women, yeah, they started out just doing photos. Mm. Our helper that just left, I think I did start to train her to do titles. I'm like, do your best, whatever. Right. Like, And as you get it, you'll get the titles. Like, she, she got so good at titles that I was like, this is way better than my work. Her yeah. photos are better. Her titles are better than mine. Yeah. Um, and now I'm like, oh, God, I feel so lazy. <laughs> now I have to, like, take photos myself. I actually learned from her. I told her that before she left. I'm like, you help me, like... Decide to like take better photos and mm. like you know because she was like staging things and yeah. stuff. Um, so it depends on the personality. You start them out slow. eBay has a bazillion item specifics that are so annoying in some categories. Women's shoes. I'm just like, oh right. my and god! It, you have to, to teach them what's important, right? And to, what's to, not the stars, yeah. and then just like skip a bunch. But of also, it, you, you know? don't. I yeah. think what's tough with training someone. You, with my last helper, I kind of had this problem where, like, you know, it would be this little item, and she would take 12 photos of it. And you're yeah. like, yo, that's right. way too many. Like, this is a three-photo item. It's like, um, yeah. it's like a coin. There yeah. are only two sides. <laughs> know, you can like, take three photos like, max. Like, she would take, like, six right. different angles, right. and you're like, Dude. But at the same time, you don't want her to then take kind of a cool, like, complicated item and only take three photos. Yeah, right. So, so yeah. you have to kind of be like, you know, I got to a point where I was like, that's fine. Like, she's still getting done enough items. It's fine. But so you have to balance, like, telling them to go quicker with telling them to be detail-oriented. Yeah, and, you know, I don't know if this is a fault of ours. I kind of don't want to be like, you need to do X amount per hour. Right. Or I'm only going to pay you X amount per item. We just give them a good hourly wage. Right. That's good for around here. Yeah. And... We're just like, do the best you can, and then, you know, well, I also, they, they, they do it. I, she sorry. was doing, our last helper was doing five items per hour, but that was photos, uploading, titles, yep. item specifics, yep. everything but putting a price. So for us... That's a lot. That was huge. That made sense. Yeah. You know? Um, and <clears throat> what I would also do is I would kind of make a pile of stuff that was expected for the day. You know, I was like, these are the things I expect you to get through. This, that, you know, this pile, this pile, and these, like, clothes. You know, and she wouldn't always get through all of them, but sometimes she would. So, you know, I kind of was like, I expect this amount in the four hours you're here. Mm-hmm. Instead of, like, here's five things. You know, it's right. just like, you're kind of setting the the level of, like, right. items you expect. Because I think she worked for us for two years. Um, you know... 
She got used to how much she could do. And so the funny thing too is me taking photos now. You know, at one point I forgot to do the measurements. <laughs> and I was like, no wonder she's doing this many items an hour. You have to weigh it. You have to measure it. You have to photograph it, obviously. Wait right. for those to upload. Um, and then you have to come over and make sure it's in all the, you know, title well, it. And make sure it's in the right category. I think you bring up a good point. It's hard for us to say, I expect you to do 10 an hour. Because we don't have consistent, yeah. homogeneous right. items. Right. Like... It's all coffee mugs, so we know exactly yeah. how long it takes. Some days it'll be t-shirts. Some days it's going to be pottery. Some days it's going to be like weird metal items. Often it's all of those things right. on the same That's what day. I was going right. to say. I was going to, like, <clears throat> the piles I have for myself, let me read off the list. Okay. <laughs> Uh, a Kelty backpack. It's like a hiking backpack. An old uh, vintage shoe box. A watering can. Um, a metal wall hook hanging. A huge metal trash can. A bunch of old roller skates. Um, and two huge, tall, bizarre <laughs> lamps. That's just right. like a handful of stuff I need, ca- you know. Now, are you picking that because they're interesting to you or they're the biggest things? That uh, they're right? big and also it was like... Um, you know, this thing, these things over here will go in a bin. So I got to get bin number. The lamps can go right. on the lamp shelf and I want them out of the way because they're really big. Right. The Kelty backpack is huge. Yeah. You know, like it's like what's in front of me. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, just to kind of wrap yeah. up this part, it's right. going to be interesting. Yeah. We'll see what his attitude is. We'll see if he's even interested because I, right, right. Because I told him on the phone, I was like, are you sure? Like, it's just going to be basically sitting in one place, taking a bunch of photos. Yeah. Of a bunch of weird stuff. Are you sure you're interested? Yeah. And, you know. He- well, look, I mean, it, it's one of those things where you have to meet them and be like, right. what kind of other jobs have you had before? Right. What are you playing? Like, you're at the college. Is the college in session right now? Like, yeah. I, you know, it's such a weird time. Where and, you're like- and then just, and I guess I'm trying to do it the way I would want to be treated. Just give me some, some guidelines. Yeah. And then let me work up to that, you know, and have some trust in yeah. what I'm doing because, rather than yeah. like, because I don't know, people got really mad at me when, when, when I was young, I remember having the jobs where there was someone like hanging over my shoulder and, and I get kids need super to, to be supervised. Yeah. But I think there's a difference between like having someone make sure you're doing a good job or someone like hanging over you and pointing out yeah. like, I don't know, like a taskmaster. Yeah. I hated that. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that's why I love working for ourselves, you know? Uh, well, they're, they're just different. It's like that movie Office Space where right. the, you know, yeah, the, exactly. you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you have a, a boss like that or you like, have a boss who's like, right. here's what I expect. Like, go for it. Right. Like, give me the tools to do a good job. Right. And then tell me what I'm doing a good job and help me if there's a problem. But I, but I have had those bosses who you can tell are looking for that I'm doing something wrong. Right. Like just waiting to tell me what I've done wrong and it's negative and I hate that. Oh, know? like me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, and and this is why, this is why we have the, the, this is why we're selling old shoes on the internet. Because it's, we don't want Instead that. of me having some career for working for a boss like that and but i do want to say real quick i know we're like going on and on about this but it's also a challenge as and i think that's why you keep checking in with me is it it's a guy he's never done ebay we don't know you know it's like you just have to see what skill level and interest they're at Mm -hmm. and you know it's there have been times where I'm like, oh, why did she take photos of, you know, 40 photos of this one little thing? And it's sort of balancing how to tell them like, hey, something like this just needs like three photos, mm-hmm. you know, and just just checking in with them, right. you know, and if they still don't do it, you're like, well, yeah, that's just how they well, do it. And that's you, you have to always see if people are teachable. Some, right, some right. people are not teachable. They're like, what I sh- I show up at eight? Okay, I'm out at ten. I don't really care what's happening. Yeah, I have no hours. idea what's or going on. Or people who are like, oh, let's you know. Yeah. Okay, so that's our like employee management course. Uh, <laughs> I 
Okay. Uh, eBay this week. <laughs> you didn't have to pay for any of that. Are you done? So just, yeah. That's free. Free lunch. That's our non-gross employee management. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? Did we sell anything? Let's talk about it. So we it. sold 45 items. Not yep. bad. Look. That's a great number. We Our gross sales were $1,440.27. So not bad. I mean, these days for us, that's... That's great. Great. Uh, uh, the good thing is, I mean, we only we only it only costs us one hundred twenty five dollars for all those items. So, like, really cheap. I mean, less yeah. than three dollars an item. Like that's and our average price sold is thirty two bucks. So, you it's know, a good average. That's kind of our bread and butter. Um, so, you know, our highest price item we sold a lot of coffee parts. Parts like this. It's machine that Ryan took apart. And she was selling them piece by piece. Some guy was like, I just want all of those parts. Yeah. And we sold them all for $220. Yeah. We bought the, uh, it's a machine for $30. 30. And I've already sold a bunch of parts. So, this is this is not the machine right. that we owned. Right. It was one that I bought to part out. And it honestly, like, it's one of those coffee makers that's not as fancy. But this guy was like, I want to repair these. I want all these right. parts. I was like, great. And, um... Well, what's interesting about that sale is eBay doesn't make it easy. So, you know, yeah. all, all these parts are, are being sold one by one. Yep. And he's like, I want them all for X price. For a discount. And it's like, so how do you do that? You know, <laughs> do you say, well, go into each one and then offer me 10% off? I mean, like that's... So the way to do it is, the way we've learned to do it is, you just make a new uh, um, item with everything... Yeah, but you know what? Like that, the way that we did that sucked because you make a new item. He wants, he wanted 10 parts, 10 items. And so I could, it's nine o'clock at night and we're like watching a movie. So I'm like, okay, I got to do this. So I'm like, I made a custom listing. I like wrote some stuff down and I put the price on it. And he's like, well, you didn't actually individually list every title what? that I, no, right. Yeah. So fine. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I like pasted every single title, put it in the description. Right. <laughs> but look, he's correct because he's like, how do I know that I'm getting what I asked for right. on this generic listing? Right. It, it's it's true. like items for Joe. Yeah. I mean, like That's all it is. So my frustration is with eBay right. where you can't just be like, I want all these things. Let's put them in like a custom cart invoice and, and give him a discount. Like you, right. I could have taken off pay immediately off those listings but i've still had people be like it made me pay immediately yeah. and you're like i don't know yeah i mean and plus it you have to go into each of the Ugh. 10 items and take so anyway it's it do, it's not the easiest but that's how we did but it. we did it and you plowed through and that was a great sale yeah it's a great it's an amazing sale actually. um so some so like we had this item that just made us money it wasn't it was a fine or whatever license plate <laughs> We it's bought uh, at an auction. I bought like a big box of old plates. vintage license plates. You know, guys like they put them on the stuff. wall. Whatever, it's fine. God bless people that do that. But we sold <laughs> two of them for seventy five bucks. That was really good. Like, I think they were Michigan, from, uh, Michigan from the seventies or something. But yeah, it was nice. So some satisfying things. Uh, you know, if you're starting out, the easiest thing to to find and buy t shirts. Baseball caps, yeah, ties. People are like, it's just gold. Like you go and ties are like, you know, ten cents a piece. And nobody buys. This them. week we sold three T-shirts. I think two or three ball caps, and we yep. sold a couple ties. The thing is, they're like ten to fifteen dollars. They're not each. very much. That money. is a grind. I mean, it's, it's a grind. It's satisfying. We sold those because we have them, but like we're still. I was on a kick, like couple of years ago i feel like it's been longer than that where like people are like i'm making all this money on t-shirts i'm like let's buy t-shirts we sold they're so cheap we bought all these t-shirts and they sell they but sell. they don't sell for very much money and they don't sell fast and, and look, look i've even found like there are some t-shirts that i'm like as a vintage you know shirt connoisseur myself i'm like 
this is an amazing right. vintage shirt. It's it's new like, old stock. It's totally from the 80s. Like, like some like, summer camp from the 80s. You're just yeah. like, this is the best. Doesn't matter. Right. Nobody wants it. Oh, or right. in two years, one right. person's going to be like, would you take $10? And you're like, oh, this yeah. is like the best vintage <laughs> shirt ever. I have one. I will describe this t-shirt for you. It is like the best shirt. It's like... Um, it, it's like green flocked. It's a green shirt with white flocked like iron on. And it's like, listen to more polka. Like wow. it, it's one of the, it's something like that. Where, outfitters where you're there, just yeah. like, this shirt is amazing. And it's like sitting in my inventory. It should be like, worth like $200. Yeah. You're like, this is yeah. a $200, like one of a yeah. kind, 19 I feel like I will say that now it's a caveat. The way we sell, probably that's not good for us. I think if you're like an Instagram, yeah, for sure, influencer, yeah. someone that has Social a media. bunch of followers, you, you, can, you could probably yeah. put that shirt up and like model it, yeah, and like a, you know, an and like do a cool, girl, like yeah, and you could probably have someone say, "I'll Venmo you," you know, a hundred bucks because it's so awesome. Yeah. It's just. But then there's just more there's work. There's all this work. There's the, the a work is different anyway. Yeah, so exactly. I hope people parse that. Go find that shirt. Yeah. Buy it. <laughs> Scavenge of the week. Uh, I went to another online auction. Yes. In internet cyberspace. Yes. And uh, I think that's the last. I've been hitting it pretty hard getting inventory. Which is good because then we haven't. Because look, we were almost yeah. out of stuff. And it's been great because. People aren't on the roads as much, so these auctions are normally in the urban areas a couple hours from us, and it's hard to go to them because it's like traffic and rush hour. If anyone knows Northern Virginia, it's a killer. It's like one of the worst traffic areas in the country. I'm sure everyone says that about where they live. It's pretty bad. But because no one's on the road right now, it's been great. Yeah, the middle of the week, you Tuesday, just are like, here we like go. It's like almost like a Sunday. So I've been trying to get stuff, but like Ryan said, our yeah. our office space now has like a wall of boxes. But I got a bunch of good stuff. You know, I spent like 400 yeah. bucks, but I got, I don't know, eight boxes of stuff. Yeah. And I think there's some good things in there. I and, unpack you know. those boxes and I find treasure, so... Yeah. It's been great. Yeah, and 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 I have no idea what you bought. Like yeah. I'm just like I don't even know. And I'm sure other people are like this too. But when when I'm like bidding on something, I try and do the a multiple quantity yeah. stuff. Right, right. Not the same item, but but like a table. A table lot. Yeah. I was trying to identify one or two things. I know we've sold yeah. before. I know how much it's worth, and that's what I bid to. Yeah. And then everything else is bonus. Is bonus. And that bonus stuff can be right. treasure. I mean, you're like, ooh. Right. And then that stuff is like, we've never seen this before. It sells. And then it's like, I'm going to keep an eye on that. And then and now I'll know over time, that. our like encyclopedia of yeah. stuff that sells just gets bigger and bigger. Yeah. And it's, then it's, it's an education. Basically when I'm 70, I'm going to be like one of those guys at the auctions <laughs> and like really like baggy pants and like a dirty t-shirt <laughs> with like sweat stained cap and i'm gonna be like yeah that's like from 1948 like mm, you know well it's so funny when i when <laughs> when i would write sometimes i would write um titles for things for my helper you know i'd be like oh this is a such and such from such and such and i would be like i cannot believe i know that off yeah. the top of my head right how well, it's like yeah. I found one before and it's sold. Ten. That's years, the only way. Years of selling just yeah. trash really yeah. teach you. Like, yeah. Customer issues, none. I don't like, think I had any after that. We had, we had like a rash of, of returns. returns, and those are over. And I don't know. <laughs> they're over forever. Yeah, no. I'm <laughs> sure right we'll get now, a return soon. We made it through. Yeah. Um, we talked about a bunch of stuff. We talked in the forum, but Simplicio, Simplicio. Um, I was like, what are you Tell saying? me if this is something new. He says he thinks it might be some, something new. So someone bought an item from him. Mm-hmm. And then was like, oh, my address is wrong. Yeah. So instead of having to cancel and have the person buy it again with the right address, he says it's possible for the buyer to simply change their address and then request a new invoice. This will put the new address into the invoice and put a new calculated amount to ship it 
The only thing that I can think of that not working, as a someone who buys a lot of stuff on eBay, if you don't do, in quotes, what they call combined shipping discounts, which most of us don't because we have weird items and we're not like selling iPhone cases where we can say, oh, a second iPhone case is 25 cents. Hold on. If you don't have that option checked somewhere in your settings, you cannot request an invoice from a seller. So even if someone buys one item, Mm-mm. they have to. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's that's my answer. So how do we handle it if someone buys something? I just change their address. Because they've requested it in a message. On the box, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like, they're like, hey, my new address is like three streets yeah. down because I moved to a new apartment. Right. You're like, fine. And we do do that. I mean, I think ultimately we take a risk doing that. But, you know, we've called eBay and, in, you know, a rep has said, ah, as long as there's like a documentation that the person asked they for. They me to. But I think, you know, push come to shove. Yeah. That doesn't really cover us. But yeah, not eBay does solution. need to make that easier. I don't know. For Maybe sure. he'll come back on and explain it a little bit. Maybe some screenshots. Like, where does that take place? But, yeah. Um, and then just a, one final thing. Our forum may be a little slow. Yeah. Uh, we're trying to work on that. I know. We're like a little tiny site, right? Yeah. We host this ourselves, uh, or we pay to have it hosted. But it's not like... For some reason, our the guy that runs our our server, server. says like we're like maximum traffic. Yeah, it's like maxing for. out traffic. But that's strange because we don't really have much more. I mean, it's basically the same group of people who are always hanging out. So I don't know if we're getting hit by like some spammer sites. But so it may be slow when you try and load. Uh, he says we can pay more for more traffic, but. You know, we don't really make any money on this, so it's not really a it's work. Hard, it to it's keep. hard to upgrade when yeah. all this is free. Yeah. Um, so. I it, don't know. I noticed it's gotten a little bit faster, but um, hopefully. We're going to do a bit of a, a bit more uh, research and see if like there are certain spammy websites that are yeah. Are roboting. How are we going to do that? I'm going to call my tech team. Yeah, sure. Over here, right? Um, <laughs> I, I do think also I have had like a rash of people email me and say, I tried to sign in five different times and it didn't work. And a lot of times what's happening is people don't remember their username. Like mm. they'll say, I've been trying to sign in with this username. And then I check their username and then I'm like, that's not your username. Mm. Yeah. Um, so if you're trying to sign in, <laughs> You can also, if if you're like, huh, that's not working, you can sign in with your email address right. and the password. The other thing, too, is people have like five different email addresses and they're like, yeah. I'm trying to sign in with this. And you're like, that's also not your email right. address that you signed up with. Yep. So if you are having an issue, definitely email us. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I can go in the back end and look at and be like, well, that's not, you know, I can also reset passwords. So. Yeah. If you need help, please email us. Yeah, it's so interesting. I don't know. These days, I, it's kind of confusing why people get confused because, like, my browser, I, I do Yeah, Chrome, I save it but on my browser. Firefox is true. If ever I, I make a new account, Chrome or Firefox will automatically yeah. save my a username and password. So if I ever go to that site again and it asks me to log in, yeah. it's already pre-filled in. And so. you can have a password on that information, which yeah. is what I have on Firefox. So. Yeah. You know, it's not like anyone using my computer can like look at my yeah, passwords. I, mean, I also have LastPass, so yeah. I actually have both yeah. saving them. So I highly recommend that because how are you even remembering yeah. all these passwords? I guess that's the old days where people have like sticky notes all Ugh. all around their computer screens for you know their th- maybe uh, or using the same password, which you absolutely should not be doing yeah. at this point in time. Well, the good thing is like with Chrome, I don't know. If if Firefox does this, they will actually say, here's a strong password. Yep, Firefox does it And now. then they'll just save it for you. It's a generated password. Yeah, and then I don't need to know that password. Yeah. Now, if I were to try and log on on... A different computer. Some computer I've never been on before, it's going to be a bit of a problem. But then I can just ask for the password again anyway. Yep. Nah. Now that is your... 
That is your tech business tech, tech business <laughs> advice. Okay, we actually had no calls or comments this week. I guess so everyone was satisfied every, with logging into the forum. Everyone's a million good. Times. Everyone knows everything, good. so we're good. Okay, that's what I like. Uh, okay, scavengelife.com. That's where we are. If you want to hang out, it's with us. Not on this podcast. <laughs> uh, and you can leave a question or comment on our voicemail line. The phone number is 540-407-8486. Or you can email us an audio file from your phone. Our email is thescavengerlife at gmail.com. And by now, uh, most people probably stopped hearing this because they hear this all the time. But I always like to do this in case someone knew... Is like, what is this thing I've just heard? So we post an episode every Monday morning. Yes. So it's every week. We like to hang out with you while you're doing work, fighting the man. Uh, Wednesdays <laughs> on scavengerlife.com, our friend Steve will send us a video that we post on our website where he shows you what he sold. Exclusive to our website. <laughs> you cannot find it on YouTube. He's very, I mean, he's such like, he's such the sweetest guy. Like he's so, and he's so knowledgeable. I feel very honored that he does that. Yeah. Um, and you can subscribe to us again through iTunes or uh, a YouTube on our a YouTube page is every single podcast we've ever done. Yep. For, for free. free. Through iTunes, I think they stop after like, 30 like things drop off we have it set at maximum so i don't know how and if you want to have your stuff all in itunes yes. you can actually pay for our archive because yep. it does take us some work and we have to pay for server space to store all that it's like six gigs and you go to scavengelife.com slash download look there's i forget what it is it's it's up it's on there it says download, download all and up, then up you top. can download them all and put them in yeah. your itunes um, guess what I'm going to publish a shampoo and booze this week. And tell us what shampoo and booze is. Okay, shampoo and booze is my sister and I have a podcast about Airbnb rentals, about design. Right. Um, we have not published one in a long time because the pandemic happened and a lot of people's Airbnbs got shut down and right. it's just been madness. Life has been crazy. But... We have a new episode that yeah. I'm going to publish. Do you want to tell us about what's going to be in it? Or? It's actually one of our design clients. So we right. do design services. You pay us to look at your Airbnb listing and say, hey, you could do this. You could do that. Let's think about this. Let's look at your listing. So it's going to be a video where you talk to a woman. Samantha. She actually yeah. listens to Scavenger right. Life, too. So. And you actually, you guys did a bunch of homework because I, re yes. I remember it took you like a weekend to do yeah. it. And uh, you guys, yep. like she gave you the space yep. and uh, you guys gave her all the uh, links to all the things she should buy. Yep. And then you put it all together. And put it on a Pinterest board. sat with her for like an hour and you talked yep. her through it all. And she gave us permission to post the video. Yeah. So um, I'm going to post that very soon. So you guys will see that update. I haven't posted anything since like February, <laughs> which is sad because um, I really, really have fun doing that with Ashley. So um, there'll be an episode. Yeah. You can go look at it. Podcasting's hard. Consistency. It's, yes, consistency's yep. hard. Okay. This podcast is ending in three, three two, two, one. one. Bye. Bye.